Unmute my two. All right, cool, everybody. Let's get going for today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so uh, we're going to start with some logistics today uh, because I just got word um, that we bought our tickets today. So we finally have our tickets, which is cool. Um, so I'm uh, going to start with just some logistics. And then uh, after a bit, we'll, we'll get into a little bit of content orientation. So um, yeah, so first, uh, I, I, I just got this email today. I didn't see it till about half an hour ago. So um, I, I need to pull everything together. I'll have a formal syllabus for you guys uh, in a day or so um, because I wait to get dates and things. Might be another date or another day or so because we're still working on where we're uh, we're staying. But nevertheless, we're, we're locked in now for our when we're leaving. So we're leaving Thursday, the Thursday before finals week. So um, and given and so this is from L LAX. Yes, LAX. There you go. LAX. So five o'clock LAX. Right. We need to be there early. I'm gonna say that again, we need to be there early. So if you guys have a class after noon, after, after 12 o'clock on Thursday, you're gonna miss it, right? So we talked about reaching out to your faculty about if there's a midterm or a quiz or whatever, definitely time to do that if you guys haven't done it yet. So reach out to him or her. Again, uh, you know, say, yo, here's the situation. I'm going on this service learning trip and, you know, uh, because of the flights, we had to, we were having to leave on Thursday evening because I had to get there. Da, 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 da. So, so that's how it's going to go. So again, do that. And then if you have challenges, then you can CC me and bring me in. But first, try to just talk with, with him or her. And again, as I said before, just a reminder, um, I'm uh, more than happy to sometimes faculty, sometimes professors will say, hey, there's this midterm. I just give this. I presume, I presume things are a little bit different now that we're you know, in the world of COVID. But before the world of COVID, some professors were like, nope, I give my final at three o'clock on Friday and that's it. I don't give it early. I make one final. I don't want some people to get it early, which is you know, sort of understandable. And so in those cases, what, what I've done is the professor has emailed me the final and I've printed it up or, or he's, he or she's put it in my box you know, the day before. And I take it and I can give it to you guys on the plane or that first night when we're you know, settling down. Um, so I'm happy to do that uh, if, if that is um, an option. Again, with the COVID world, I, I suspect that's um, less as much of a need thing. Oh, sorry. Okay, so um, but but so but so the point is we're leaving 5 p.m. Thursday, the 10th. I believe the 10th, right? Yeah, 10th of March. Um, coming back Sunday the 20th. Uh, with all the flights and and uh, uh, you know all that kind of stuff. Uh, we basically will get there super, I thought we're getting there. I thought they said we're getting there early morning. Oh, interesting. Now I got to figure out what we're doing for Thursday night. I, th I thought the original thing we discussed, we were getting in at, uh, at like 5 a.m. But um, okay, that's a new one. I'm glad I just looked at that. Uh, so, um, but in any event, leave Thursday, get there. And then uh, uh, flights, yes, we will return home on Sunday the 20th. So uh, the returning time will get, so I would just, I would just for right now, just jot in 5 p.m. departure LAX, and then the return. Return flight, oh, they got us a super ass early morning flight on Sunday. Okay, great, <laughs> great. Uh, the reality is probably Tom, John, and I probably are not coming back with you. We probably need to stay a couple more days. So we're really worried because we've not gotten to our plots in three years. Um, uh, this will come out in the next week or so when we talk about it. But um, we have two main things we'll be surveying in terms of our wetland restoration stuff. One is um, is these band transects off the trails, which you guys will all become intimately familiar with. And then we have a series of permanent plots that um, starting in what year that was starting in 2008 2009 something like that we established these in random parts in the forests um and for those we have to go find them and it's always hard we have to hack away blackberry and find these pvc pipes that we jam the ground that's when we did it every year but because of covid we this will be the first time in three years we've actually gotten there to survey them i suspect it's going to take a long long time to find those and so um, because that's part of our commitment to our ngo I think the, the, the three faculty will probably stay there for a couple more days. So you guys will probably fly back on your own, but, but I'm still talking about that with my colleagues. 
Um, so the other, the other uh, challenging thing now we have this year in terms of um, logistics is uh, historically we always get a Roadrunner shuttle. Roadrunner doesn't exist anymore. So that shuttle service that we normally contract with to pick us up, drive us to the airport, um, isn't around. And so um, there's no real good options right now. Uh, maybe in the six months there'll be some better options, but right now there's, there's no good options. So we're gonna be on our own to get to LAX. So um, if you guys want to carpool with your buds, that's cool, but, but um, I, there's no easy way to get a contract um, vehicle. The biggest things are Uber X's, but they don't, they don't it's super expensive. It's, it's way too expensive for what they do, and, and it just won't, won't fit us all of our equipment, so, so it won't work either way. Um, so uh, we can talk about that next week, but just in your head, right? Um, uh, if you guys want to carpool, like if you guys all have noon classes and you guys want to have some, your roommate or somebody drive you from, from school, that's all good. Um, so I want to know what your guys' plans are. And we want to, um, so in a regular time, in the regular world, for a domestic flight, you want to get there two hours early. LAX, what the hell, who knows? Maybe we'll get there, it'll be the smoothest thing in the world, baby's bottom kind of thing. Maybe there'll be total cluster f um, We just won't know. So because of that, we're going to want everybody there three hours early, which sounds insane, but we just need to do that. Um, because of the way we check in, um, the way school buys our tickets for us, um, uh, and I haven't had a chance to go through this, so more emails later this week, but, but um, we're in groups. And so each group has a, has a um, booking number. So we'll have a couple different booking numbers. Um, uh, when I give this to you this week, if, or next week, I guess, I guess we're flying Delta? Look, that's news to me, Delta, okay. I haven't flown Delta in several years, so okay, that's cool. Um, uh, if you guys have a frequent flyer mileage plan, you're more than welcome to add on, add that, add this flight to your stuff to get your mileage, right? We'll, we can do that, you know, in a bit tonight, but, but, but you guys, I encourage you guys, if that's an option to do that. Um, uh, virtually every single year, there's chaos with traveling. It's either because we have drones or it's because they want us to be in the group check-in line. We go in the group check-in line and they go, you're not a group. So then we go to the other one. And they go, no, you're supposed to be the group. So it's just, there's always, it's just always chaos. So um, it's all good. Not going to let it get us down or anything, but we just need to book some more time. Again, if we fly through and get there and sit around and eat Cinnabons for an hour and a half, all good, all good. But, but um, so our plan is departure five. So we should all get there by 2 p.m. Again, part of the reason is we can't all check in unless we're all together. So if we're all there and waiting for one random per student to come, we're kind of all waiting. And so we want to just get there. It's all good. Um, and of course, if you get a flat tire or something like that, you know, just set, let me know. But but that's the plan. So the plan is Thursday of before finals week, you guys are going to be at LAX. You're going to physically be there with your jazz uh, by 2 p.m. Cool. And it's going to be awesome. And then our trip will formally, officially, awesomely begin. Um, uh, so there'll be a few things that I want you, I want to um, have you guys add on to your list of things. Um, the first one, though, let's do right now. Let's do this right now. And that is our. Uh, so normally, like getting to LAX and this kind of stuff, texting. I'm going to start a group text chain with all of us, so we all are on the same same thing. We just reply. Um, but uh, the thing we'll use when we're particularly out in the field doing stuff um, is this program called Zello. So if, has anybody used the Zello app before? So it's a free app, works on Android, uh, iPhone, whatever. So download it. It is a push to talk walkie talkie. So it's as if we have our own little walkie talkies, but it works on our phone. And so, so we'll take a second, you guys download Zello. It's, 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 uh, Oh, I almost wrote with a Sharpie on the board. That'd be good. Zello, Z-E-L-L-O. In your, in your app store uh, or Google Play, whatever it is. So take a second and go find that and download it. Um, and then uh, just do your initial sign up. It's free. And then we have our own channel. I'm going to have you guys join. So, so once, you, once, you get, once you get good, 
We're just going to search for Pirate Lab, and then our um, our password is this guy right here. I think that's our password. Yeah, that's our password. Um, and so that should allow you to join it. Uh, all one, yeah. It's all. It's all. I believe it's all one. Oh, there's a two choices now. Oh my God, there's so many choices. Yeah, I think I think I think that was only for like a like a school bought an account or something like that. When you guys do that, I'm going to turn on my channel and it'll make a funny echo sound when we all start talking to each other. It's what? Uh, if you have Wi-Fi. If you have Wi-Fi. Everywhere we go that we'll need this, like in the in the um, swamp and stuff, we'll have cell phones. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you're Bluetooth, it'll work on Bluetooth. But if, if we're just totally, totally in the middle of nowhere. Cool. So then once you guys join, oh no. Once you guys join that one, let me turn mine on. Um, uh, it looks like this, and or something similar to this. And so once you get it done, if I want to talk, I'm just gonna push that middle button like that, and it'll make that sound. I'll go, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll talk as long as I want and let up. When I'm pushing the uh, just like a regular walkie-talkie, when I'm pushing that button, none of you guys can talk. I can talk, but I have to make sure. So the most common one is you push the button, you're like, Hey, how are you guys about this? And you leave your thumb on. You're like, why aren't you guys saying anything? And is anybody here? And is my phone broken? And all that kind of stuff. And you're like, oh, you take it off. The other one, just so that you guys know, I, I didn't discover this till one year we we're in New Orleans, and the students use it for their videos, which so that ended up being cool. But um, this is all recorded. So if you're doing, which is actually a good thing. So you're doing stuff. You're hacking through BlackBerry, and you this beeps. You go. Hey, can you guys? You're like, what the hell is that? And you're like, I don't know what it was. Instead of instead of you can push a button and say, what did you say? You can also just scroll to the history and replay the message. So it's actually fairly convenient. So it's all good. Just don't like say, you know, like, you know, Dr. A is the biggest a hole in the world, right? Because then it'll be like, oh, I see, I can see you know, the biggest a hole in the world, right? So so um, there is memory here. So that's a cool thing, but just just realize that. And so once you guys get logged on. Just go bloop, bloop, and say, hey, this is and whatever your name is, and 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 hey, this is Sean, and let go. And, and that'll be a test, and we'll see if we can hear you. Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, is that you? Lost the there you go. There you go. There you go. See? No, no, no. The only hitch with this is if you forget to turn it on, sometimes you're out in the middle of the forest, you're like, God, nobody's going to ask me any message. We just have to sort of get in the habit when we go out in the field is make sure we turn the app on. So, so it'll beep, beep in our pocket. We'll say, oh, okay. But yeah, cool. Yeah, make sure you allow notifications and all that stuff. So. Right. So far, looks like we got, <laughs> we got bounce morgue plea. 
we got we got uh oh no not bounce no, I suppose, do i want to bounce oh i guess that means i'm gonna kick you out okay never mind okay i was like who wrote bounce more quickly? uh uh okay good how do i see how many people okay here we go here we go here's the people, here's the people. let's see <laughs> oh, he's just heard it. Okay, so looks like you got Amanda, Ashley, Dorian, Jen, Michael. Going by the code M Boyd, so we have to remember out in the field who oh, M Michael. Okay. Uh, I think it. Well, I don't know. So, 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 so call, so call Michael, and I'll see, see what it says when it pops up. Yeah. Um, okay, who else? Let's see. Where else are we? Where else are we? No. No. It's it's just it's just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five letters. Amanda, Ashley, Dorian, Jen, Michael, Morgan, Seth, Sylvia, Suzanne, Zach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that's got everybody because uh, Celeste is down south. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. So we'll 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 add uh, Tom and John into back in that. So that's awesome. So so is everybody cool? It makes sense, everybody, how this works. So again, the only thing it, again, it only works though when you're um, when you have it on. So if we have a conversation, and you're you you do not have the app on. When you turn on the app, you could you know go back and look at stuff. Um, I think you can also send pictures through this. Um, and uh, so if you have, if you wanted to send a photo or something of that nature, um, but uh, again, really helpful for just quick in the field communication, right? And a lot of times. Texting works as well, but a lot of times it's just easier, faster to just ask, like just have a quick conversation, but you don't want to like sort of have the phone ring for 30 seconds, someone finds their phone, it's just sort of an on-demand, not sort of, it is an on-demand thing. So this, is, this, this has been really helpful over the years there. So we got that. Uh, the next thing is uh, when you guys uh, start um, uh, sharing anything, uh, if you want to uh, have any social media stuff, so our Twitter, our Twitter uh, stream is, or our account uh, is at Restoring NOLA. And the hashtag that we use is CSUCI NOLA. So if you guys are posting something on Instagram or you're, or you're, or whatever you're doing, um, just CSUCI NOLA. That's an easy way for us to go back and scrape stuff or, or find stuff that we're um, talking about. You don't have to use that if you're doing like a personal picture or something, but for stuff that's like, you know, class stuff or something relevant to others. Um, if you if you wouldn't mind using that, that'll help us sort of just round up stuff um, as we go. Uh, we also have a website that I've not configured yet that I will finish configuring. And so um, that's a place where um, I'd like uh, all of us to do. And so each day when we're doing something, we're going to go hear a speaker. We're going to go, you know, whatever um, to this new site. That day, I'll pick. Um, usually, we do it in pairs of two, but you know, we'll see how it goes. But like, yeah, hey, you, you two guys, do the do an update today. And so, what that means is, uh, for each of our blog posts, we'll go over this. But you guys need to take a, at least one or two photos, at least two photos. You do a little short video or what have you, and then at the end of the day, just want you guys and the two of you can team up how you want to do it. But just you know, a paragraph or two kind of summary like what we did something about this you can go way more which would be great but at least a paragraph or two and a picture or two and that um that way uh and we can share that with our um friends and family back home and other folks and, and folks can uh, follow us it's also just a great thing to look back after, after the trip oh i forgot we did that I forgot we did that. so so that that blog post I'll, we'll talk about um next time I, again i haven't had time to set it up yet but we will have it up in time for next week's class uh, other logistics stuff that we're going to be going on to um, again because because we just got the tickets I don't have the syllabus this is an old syllabus that I need to uh, update but um, but when I share with you there's, there's various links 
I would, I would encourage you guys to play around with those, read some things. There's some things that I really think you should read. Uh, other things, it would be nice if you had time, but, but you know, we're not being tested on any of this stuff, but I'll share that with you next week. But what I wanted to talk about right now is stuff we should be working on. Stuff we should be working on. No, okay, well, I don't know where, it's somewhere in that thing. Uh, but here's the deal. So we're gonna be out doing work in the swamp, in a swamp. So we're going at this time of year. One of the reasons we go this time of year is because our spring break, right? And so the rules for IRA is we're only allowed to go on, on uh, major trips when there aren't classes in effect. So if we have a, if we have a Pons Bio or a field methods trip, we can go to the islands for the weekend. Technically speaking, we're not supposed to go to the islands during the week. Right? So the idea is we're not trying to pull you all out of class. So the fact that we're leaving on Thursday and Friday, I'm like illegal, right? So we're not <laughs> supposed to do that. Not supposed to do that. So, um, oops, sorry. Anyway, but but um, but the main thing is, you know, the bulk of the, the bulk of the trip was in February. That that totally that's not legit, right? Um, and so, um, so the consequence was there's only a few times we can do these trips. Winter break, which is when our Hawaii trip goes. Spring break was when our Costa Rica, when hopefully one, actually that will come back, but, but uh, uh, you know, spring break and then sometimes summer. So when I, when I took students to the Cook Islands, we went over the summer. Um, and so those are, the, those are the only time blocks. Turns out this is probably the, just about the best time of the year for us to go. Theoretically, because of the plants, it would be better if we could do this trip probably three or four weeks after we typically do it. And that has to do with how the plants are leafing out, how the trees are leafing out. Um, and that, that's the subject for next week's discussion. But, but the short version is, depending on how cold it is, some years we get there and the leaves, the, the, the trees are all there, but the leaves are like, whoop, you know, they're, they're, they're sucked in. Much of the, much, many of the species that we're going to be surveying are deciduous so they drop their leaves in the in the cold time of the year, the winter time of the year um and so it's it's easier to identify when you have all the body parts right but so when the leaves are a little bit it's it's a little bit harder it'll be fine but it would be even nicer a few weeks later having said that uh, so if we wait until summer everything would be totally leafed out and you would be dripping in sweat the whole time and it'd be humid as heck and lots and lots and lots of mosquitoes if we went over winter break, it would actually be really hard to identify some of these trees because there would be almost no leaves out at all. And that's, you know, December, early January just is, some years they have had snow at that time of year where, where, we go, where we're going. So it's just, it's just not, so this is a, this is a pretty good, this is a, this is a trade off between no plants, can't see stuff and oh my God, so hot, we can barely breathe. And so, so we're in a, a pretty sweet spot. Also, we're gonna be there during, um, we're not there during Mardi Gras, Course, that's a subject for another class, um, another another intro lecture. But um, uh, we are there during you know some fun times of the year, right? So you guys will get to see some of the some of the stuff, St. Patrick's Day, all that all that kind of jazz. So it's it's a it's a pretty good fit for us. Um, having said that, the time of year that we're going, highly variable weather. So um, it could be crazy cold. It could be pretty darn warm. Right. It's not going to be 100 degree days, but it could be pretty warm. And so we just have to be ready for that. So just like all of our field activities, we should be layering, right? So we should be sort of being able to take something on, put something on, uh, you know, that kind of deal. Having said that, there's a couple key pieces of, I should have worn them today. I didn't did think about that. Uh, a couple key pieces of equipment. Out and about in the swamp, um, the biggest uh, challenge is going to be getting scratched. So we always worry about alligators and cotton mouth snakes and those things that are real, but like much more like day to day, the much more likely thing that'll cause you issues are bl blackberry um, stems and sticks sticking out. So um, what's going to be uh, our default gear is heavy, clo is heavy clothing. Now you're thinking, oh my God, it might be hot. Why do I want to have heavy clothing? you want heavy clothing. So um, the thing I recommend is Carhartt pants. So, uh, 
Some of you guys know about those, some of you don't know, but these are essentially um, really thick uh, pants, okay? You can get these online, um, but I don't really recommend you get them online because the sizes are kind of weird. Much better to go to a place like Boot Barn in Oxnard where they have all the sizing, you just try them on and try them on. And so with these are, these are basically really heavy denim, kind of you know, thick stuff. And there's like, there'll be a couple different versions. So this, these pair of jeans I have on right here is, is you know, they're not the thinnest thing in the world, but they're not super thick. Essentially Carhartts, the ones you want to get are the kind that have a double, a double thing in front, a double layer, whatever we call it, front. So if I grab this, it'll be really thick. Different colors, you can pick your color. They have like, you know, browns and blues and, and whatever. Um, but you're going to want that nice thick stuff, one. And so, and so you guys, that, that's on you guys. You guys get your own pants and all that kind of stuff. Every year there's a student or two who's like, oh, I'm cool, Dr. Ray, I know how to do it. And most years they end up like getting on Amazon the first day in the field. They're like, I need like next day air, like car hearts. So, so get that. Um, you know, you could bring multiple pairs, but just bring one. I don't really need one. Um, wear the same pants because you're just going to be sweaty and blah, 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 just take it off at night and put it on the daytime. Um, so, so good, thick, solid pants, good, solid footwear. So boots, something with strong ankle support. It is almost guaranteed somebody's going to, if not twist an ankle, come close to twisting an ankle. It's just uneven, forest floor, wet, muddy, just all that stuff. So um, absolutely no flip-flops. Well, you can bring flip-flops for like taking showers, or but, but not in the field. And you really do need good boots. If you don't have any good boots, again, that boot farm place in Oxnard is, is a great place to go get some if you don't have any. Um, uh, it will be potentially wet. So got our thick pants, got our default, you know, work boots, hiking boots kind of thing for ankle support. And then, um, uh, rubber boots so again it could be just dry as heck which would be great and we're dry the whole time super cool it could be dumping rain the different areas again this will be next week's talk but the different areas of the swamp where we're working some are higher than others some are lower than others so even if most of the area is you know relatively dry depending on where we're going or where your transect is taking you might go through a little you know depression and, and, and so you're going to get water at some point in time. Just a matter of you get a little bit of water or a lot of water. And so well, you, could, you could get, you know, hip waders, but generally speaking, that's a little bit out of control. So the kind of stuff we're doing, um, it's either going to be, so some years it's been so much water that even the hip, they go in the hip boots. And so there's, there's either going to be so much water that you would need waders, in which case we're not going to go out in the swamp if it's, three feet standing water. That's just logistically, we can't do stuff. Um, or it's gonna be enough that we can do with the, with the regular, um, you know, just galoshes up to your calf kind of size, size rubber boots. Um, and again, you can get those, those suckers at wherever, Home Depot, Big Five, um, just about anywhere. It doesn't need to be super special, just something, you know, rubbery. I would, I would recommend, although again, I always encourage for these things, you guys don't buy it online. I'd recommend getting a little bit larger than your size and just putting an extra wool sock or two inside. That's usually a lot easier because when they get muddy and stuff, if you have a really tight fitting boot, a lot of times they're kind of hard to pull off. So always, my recommendation is always go a little bit bigger and just put some extra, um, you know, fillers in there in the form of more socks. That that usually is a is a better route. Um, and the last thing you guys should get in terms of um specific purposeful gear uh leather gloves a, a good pair of leather gloves again same thing just for for protection going through the forest hacking through stuff um uh, and again go to home depot find a pair that fits you well write your name on it with a sharpie um and, and it's all good now we're not going to you know outer borneo so if we showed up and you didn't have a pair if your rubber boots got lost or something of course, we could run to Home Depot, but we want to avoid that if possible, right? We don't want to be running around buying equipment. We want to get as much of it to be self-contained as possible. Um, and then other than that, it, it's, all, it's just regular um, personal, personal gear we'd be having in the field. So um, 
So uh, my recommendation is going to be, again, even though it might be super hot, long sleeve shirts. So again, for the scratches and there's the brambles and that kind of jazz. Um, uh, some type of hat. I'm obviously bald. Aha. So I need a hat because, uh, as the doctor said today, I, I had my, uh, my, my annual skin checkup. I was like, looking good. So you wear, you wear sunscreen every day? I like, uh, I wear a hat every day. She said, yeah. So you wear sunscreen every day? And I said, well, I wear a hat every day. She goes, hmm. What about your face? I was like, uh, well, my cat usually goes, nope. Sunscreen on your face every day. So, so anyway, so, um, so I wear a hat all the time because I'm bald. Um, but you guys should have a hat on also. So little, that little bit of brim will, or brim on your hat will help you a little bit with branches and stuff. Also, some type of eyewear. So you guys don't need to buy this because you probably already have this. Either prescription glasses or sunglasses. Again, just, just because there's stuff that can poke you in the face and all that jazz. Um, uh, what else did I want to say? There's a few other things, but, but those will, I'll tell you about those in the coming weeks. But, but that's the main thing. So, you know, you guys, we have a month or so for you guys to go buy stuff. So, um, so it's still plenty of time, uh, but, but it's still definitely something, you know, make a plan this weekend. Maybe I'll go to the boot barn this weekend and try some pants on and see which size you know, fits me kind of deal. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. So when it comes to the luggage, are we doing carry on only? No. We're checking in. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, I, again, I, I have to go look at the new requirements for uh, um, Delta, but just going off previous years, so I can update everybody next week, going on previous years, um, um, I don't know what their baggage um, fees are. I, I have to look it up. We will, you guys will all have a check bag or a bag that's capable of being checked, right? Like your underwear and shampoo and all that kind of jazz, right? Boots and car hearts and stuff. So I have that. Boom, check that dude in. And then you guys have a carry on. The way the rules typically have gone, gonna, I, I flew to New Orleans in December. But that was the first time I was on a plane in like almost two years. So I'm assuming the rules have all stayed the same, but I do need to do some more scrutiny and double check. Um, but generally speaking, your carry-on is in addition to a purse, right? So because I'm comfortable with my sexuality, I bring a purse that I call a camera bag, right? So I have a <laughs> camera bag and then like a backpacky kind of thing, right? So that's all legit. That's all legit. Um, uh, Zach and I, the biggest issue, quite honestly, and it's an issue every single year, I couldn't believe this trip in December, the first time ever didn't have an issue with drone batteries. The first time ever in, I'm not kidding you, probably 11 years. Uh, and they've made me, as we were getting on the plane one year in New Orleans, they called me out to the front of the airport. And as, as you guys were literally walking on the plane, I ran back out and they're like, yeah, you can't take any of these batteries. Like, but we flew here with these batteries. I don't care, you can't take your batteries back. I'm like, what the? So I had to wrap them all up in, a, uh, in my jacket and run through the airport through Homeland Security with all these massive batteries. Like, what's that? Like, I have to do this. And I literally got on the plane as the door was closing. And then they're like, yeah, you can't have those in the cabin. I'm like, oh, sorry. Yeah, so, so there's, there's always some kind of chaos. And so, I, we will attempt to not have chaos. There will almost assuredly be some type of chaos. So um, usually it's because of our equipment or oftentimes it's because of our equipment. So you guys have your personal bag, check in, your personal carry on, check in. And then we're gonna have, and again, this is something we'll work out over the next couple of weeks. We're gonna have several crates that we'll bring and that's gonna have transect tapes in there that we'll use. It's gonna have you know the drone, it's gonna have a bunch of stuff. And so, um, we will, uh, uh, we go to check in, the first few people, you know, like Dorian will go up and go, hey, so she's first line, like, Here, here's your bag and your other bag, right? And they're gonna go, did you pack this? And Dorian's gonna go, yep. And we go, okay, cool. And then, right, and I'll be like, transit And the next person's gonna come up, you're gonna go, here's my personal, first personal bag and my second personal bag. <laughs> um, theoretically, we should just be able to like, you know, me go up the professor guy and do it, but it's way more expensive if I put in five bags. It's a little bit more expensive when you guys have your extra bag. So we just do that to save money. Um, and so, yeah, so we'll get all that stuff. And um, yeah, so I will check for sizes and dimensions and, and all of that, uh, all that good stuff. Um, any other legit, so as, as we're like, you know, 
several weeks out, but it's a perfect time to start buying stuff. Anybody have any questions about stuff you think we, we might need or you're wondering about if you should bring or, or anything like that? You guys are welcome to wear whatever you want in the field. So, so um, shorts are just not a good idea. But if you wanted to try your favorite pair of cargo pants, it's all good. It's all good. So I'm not I'm not going to like go up and inspect to make sure everybody's got car hearts. That's just from years of experience. That's the thing that works the best. Some people like some people like uh, what do you call them? The overalls, the, you know, the bib fronts, whatever whatever floats your guys' boats. You just need heavy duty utility. Yes, yeah. So the thicker, the better. So where I first discovered Carhartts, uh, what year was it? 2001, I guess. It was just after the 9-11. Uh, and so I was up at um, my new postdoc up at Stanford and I was working on grassland restoration. And um, there was, do, do you guys know what milk thistle is? Yeah, so big, thick, thick aster, lots of spikes. And I was, uh, one of my sites, I was gonna restore this grassland that was taken over by all these invasive plants. And so uh, I was surrounding this big giant oak tree, like a 300 year old oak tree. So I climb in this oak tree and I'm looking around, I'm getting a perspective. And it was before I had drones, right? So I was trying to get up high, okay, that's cool. And I somehow managed to climb up this tree and I was getting ready to go back down. And I was like, oh my God, it's one of those things where it's way easier to get up. And then how do I get down? I have no idea how to get down. And so I'm like, oh, okay. And I, I came up, come up on this one side of the tree and I was going down this other side of the tree. And long story short, I kind of got down and it was, I was maybe like 20 feet off the ground. So I kind of climbed down until I was about 10 feet off the ground. I was like, okay, what I'll do is just hang down and I'll drop down into the grass, I'll drop down to the, to the plants, right? So kind of let myself down and I dropped down. Uh, it was, all, I thought it was like milk thistle, like two feet tall. It was about four feet tall. <laughs> and I jumped down into this thing of thorns and I'll just say it was extremely painful. And I mean, I like, I had like things in my biceps and in my arm. I mean, it was like, it was insanely painful. So I had blood. I, I, I had blood on the outside of my clothes and shirt and stuff from this stuff. And I was like, oh my God. And I'm like, what is the worst thing ever? And people are like, what idiot? I have to wear car hearts. And because I was, I was a marine biologist by training. So I was always underwater. I never really worked in that kind of setting in the middle of summer like that. And, uh, or, or yeah, late fall at that point. Um, so anyway, so that's when I first discovered car hearts. And so uh, everybody has their story, but they, they help a lot. Well, they they help. Expensive, but they're worth it. Like, they last forever. Yeah, totally, 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 totally. Um, good, other questions? All right, cool. So that's our stuff. I will, um, the other thing I will do for you guys is um, I will start to, uh, so most of these lectures I either have recorded or I will record them. Uh, there's one that I, I that just never works right. And so that is our playlist. So I'll have a playlist for us starting next week or by next week, which is gonna be our soundtrack. And so um, uh, I believe strongly in supporting our artists and all kinds of artists. My father's an artist. Um, and I, I support visual arts, I support uh, you know, music, all that kind of good stuff. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a playlist. It's become impossible for me to make you all a playlist, right? So I don't mean some Spotify crap, I mean an actual playlist. And so, um, so I'll have that for you guys that'll span the diversity of New Orleans music, which is a key part of our culture. Once I send it to you guys, I would encourage you guys to put it on your, upload it to your, your music or whatever the app is that you guys like to play stuff with and just listen to it on your, on your computer when you're brushing your teeth. I totally get that not all of the music is maybe gonna be all of your jam, but give it a try. You know, listen to it a couple times through and then you'll figure out if you like something or not and you know, it's all good. Um, I, I struggled for you way back when I used to burn CDs for you guys. I know that's how old I am. Yeah. Old school. Uh, and now nobody has a CD player, so it doesn't work. Um, in fact, our vans oftentimes don't have CD players anymore. Anyway. Um, so, uh, so we have that. Um, essentially, now I, I'll, I'll make a bunch of uh, uh, MP3 files, MP4 files, well, MP3 files for you guys. Um, and uh, I tried very, very hard to do it the correct way. I contacted the Recording Institute of America to figure out how to license this stuff. 
there is essentially no way to do that. So if you guys have a classical music class, um, uh, your professor maybe has a playlist or something, a lot of times that's associated with a book. So the, the producers of the text for the class make that, and it's part of like buying the book. So you have, a, have, you know, have the music you listen to. The stuff that we listen to, most of it, quite honestly, you can get off iTunes or any kind of regular store, but there's also other things that are more obscure that we can't do it. And so it was, I either had to leave music out and only have the commercial stuff, and it, it, it just got super complicated. Uh, most of the artists I've talked to, and they're like, yeah, it's cool if you guys put this on your thing for the class and then, you know, kill it after the class. Um, uh, but so, so most of the artists that I know are, are very cool that way. Don't know everybody. So I never got that permission from, for example, Lou, the Armstrong Foundation, Louis Armstrong's people. Other cases, I have some random CD I got in 1998 uh, from some random street singer and they don't exist anymore. I can't reach out to them. So there, there's, it's, just, it's just so impossible. So I, I've reached out to professors at major universities and like I said, called lawyers and talked to like, how do I do this? And, and everybody these days, most professors go, oh, I just make a Spotify playlist. That, that won't work for us though. So, so I will have that list. I encourage you guys to put on your computer, listen to it, check it out. And that's sort of like our soundtrack. It's one, both understanding the culture of the folks that we're going, of, of the area that we're going to check out, but it's also a way for you to, to you know, get some energy going and some good, good vibes and everything. So, um, so that's our playlist. So look for that when I, when I share that. Um, oh, and then I, what I also say is, uh, the other thing that I will note is when we go to do things, we go to places, um, if we go to a show, you guys should always have some cash with you, uh, typically like a 20. And so if you like that singer, a lot of times they, well, I assume this is still this way, right? Uh, after the pandemic, things have changed, but, um, uh, people will have their own CDs. So if you like that ladies' music, if you like that band's music, they'll be sell they either take a break or the end of the night or whatever, they'll, they'll have them. And a Sharpie, have a $20 bill and a Sharpie. And you go up, hey, really love your show. Would you mind signing this for me? They'll love to sign it for you. Love to talk to you for a few minutes, say thanks so much, sign it. Nobody has to do that. But, but that's a way to get um, something that you could then burn um, it's interesting because a lot of people are starting to go away from, from CDs because it's just people aren't making albums anymore. People are making singles. And so people we know that originally made albums when we first started going to New Orleans have stopped making albums and instead are doing like one-off singles kind of thing. And some people are even stopping to do that. Um, but anyway, but, but that's a professional way. So if you really like one of these songs, I encourage you guys to buy an album of the person. Don't stream it. Professional artists, unless you're like YouTube or Britney Spears or something, uh, YouTube, Jesus, YouTube. <laughs> I don't know how YouTube became YouTube, but YouTube. Uh, or the, you know, those folks make money off the streaming. Nobody else does, and they make a few pennies a month off streams. So the way we support these folks is to, you know, buy a T-shirt, buy an album, and I would encourage you guys to consider buying the album because that's something that lives. I mean, get a shirt too, but but that's something that lives with you, right? You can remember it and, and all that fantastic stuff. Um, uh, so th th that's just regular old stuff, but I find that a lot of you guys that don't go to music shows a lot, that's sort of a, not lost art, but you guys just don't have any experience with that, but that's totally legit. It's totally cool. That's a great way to support that artist in his or her uh, uh, stuff they're doing. So, cool. Uh, yeah. Other questions or the logistics things people are wondering about? Okay, all right. Let me uh, stop this for a second.